guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I thought we would talk about sepsis. So if you wanted to find sepsis, it could be a life-threatening organ dysfunction from dysregulated host response to an infection. So when an infection is taking over and the body is dis auto and doesn't know what to do. The most common causes of the infection usually come from the urine or the lungs. So pneumonia or urosepsis or UTI, that's gone to the kidneys, so pylum. Um, after that, it can be from any abdominal pathologies and it's really how the patient presents leading you to one or the other. And the mortality rate for sepsis can be as high as 30% for sepsis, as high as 50% for severe sepsis, and as high as 80% for septic shock. So it's definitely something to take seriously. So when it comes to sepsis, there have been many different definition changes recently. The new one in 2016. So uh, the Severe sepsis and Sears criteria are no longer used in the new definition. They found that Sears criteria doesn't always lead to a source of infection. So those criteria were thrown away in the new definition in 2016. And then severe sepsis was intertwined in the new SOFA score. That's S-O-F-A score in terms of mortality and recognizing sepsis. So the SOFA score, I'm not going to get into that. It's pretty intricate and I always use a calculator if I'm going to calculate the SOFA score, uh, but it's more commonly used in hospitalist medicine or ICU medicine. Um, and in the emergency department, I use the Q SOFA score. So that's the quick SOFA score. And that has respiratory rate um, and a couple other different altered mental status uh, things to recognize quickly what's going to happen and what's going to turn into sepsis. So I, the new sepsis definition is two, a score of two on the SOFA score plus some sort of source of infection. And the old sepsis criteria still kind of intertwined into recognizing sepsis today in the hospital, even though it's not used in the definition anymore, uh, are the two Sears criteria plus some sort of infection and the Sears criteria can be a high or low temperature, uh, higher than 38 degrees Celsius, lower than 36 degrees Celsius. Uh, it could be a high or low white blood cell count, higher than 12K or less than 4K. Uh, a heart rate that is greater than 90 or a respiratory rate that's greater than 20. And you all, all you needed was two of these plus some sort of source of infection. So uh, if they had a temperature and a white blood cell count, and you found that their urine had positive leukes and nitrites, then you can call them urosepsis or their chest x-ray shows some sort of pneumonia and they have an increased respiratory rate or uh, and their white blood cell count was elevated. They can, you can call them septic at that point. Um, and then severe sepsis again, isn't used anymore, but the old definition recognized severe sepsis as a person that has sepsis and then some sort of end organ dysfunction. And then septic shock is defined as someone that has sepsis. So you've used the QSOFA criteria, you found some sort of infection, and these patients aren't responding to your 30 cc per kg bolus of fluids, and you need to start them on vasopressors to keep their mean arterial pressure greater than 65. So when it comes to the signs and symptoms of the patient, that may have sepsis, make sure you pay really close attention to this. So yes, we might recognize sepsis based on their vital sign abnormalities, which is good because we get those pretty quickly when the patient walks in the door so we can recognize sepsis as soon as possible. But the signs and symptoms and or the history taking that you're talking to the patient saying, well, what you brought you in in the first place will give you a good idea as to where the source of infection is coming from. and maybe their chief complaint has nothing to do with their source of infection. So you always need to do a pretty extensive review of systems on these patients because you might think, oh, they're probably going to have this. Uh, and if that comes back negative and you didn't do that review, review of systems, then you're missing finding that source of infection quickly. So I pretty much go head to toe in the review of systems with any patient that may be septic or at risk for sepsis. And uh, that usually gives me a good idea of where the infection is going to come from and therefore what antibiotic I'm going to 
treat well, as soon as I get those positive sepsis definition criteria to start antibiotics. Um, when it comes to the workup, pretty much a, a lot of labs are going to be ordered. Always order a CBC because you want that white blood cell count. Get a diff and you can look at the different kinds and what type of pathogen may be infecting this patient. Get a CMP, not a BMP, because again, we're looking at end organ dysfunction. So you want to include a bilirubin and LFTs in this patient's workup. Get a PTI or it's useful for mortality reasons and sepsis. Always get a lactic acid. Uh, there's a point of care lactics in some places. Uh, other places will have to send up a lactic acid on ice. Always get two sets of blood cultures from two different areas on these patients. And then you're going to want to order broadly uh, an infection workup like a urinalysis, uh, urine culture, chest x-ray looking for pneumonia. If you suspect some sort of abdominal pathology, you need to get a CT abdomen pelvis. And then sometimes I tag on a procalcitonin and I can tell you if there is a bacteria that's causing the infection versus something else like a virus. Uh, and if the patient is severely immunocompromised or uh, they've been in and out of the emergency care and we can't really find out what's happening or what's causing their illness, sometimes I'll add on a RBP. When it comes to the treatment of sepsis, the one, number one thing that you're going to be starting immediately is IV fluids at a 30 cc per kg bolus. And some patients, if they're in septic shock and their blood pressure is dropping and they don't respond to these fluids, they are going to need to be started on pressors. And usually the presser of choice in sepsis is a levofed. And after that, um, you're gonna to need to start these patients on antibiotics and usually the antibiotics are tailored toward wherever infection you suspect or whatever infection you have found at that time. So if you they have urosepsis and their urine looks pretty yucky, usually I start them on ceftriaxone unless they have a history of uh, resistant urinary tract infections. And then I usually consult urology at that point. Uh, or I look at their previous urine cultures and see what they were susceptible to at that point. If they have pneumonia uh, and it's community acquired, you can start them on ceftriaxone and azithromycin um, or monotherapy of lepiquin. Hospital acquired, you're going to have to up the antibiotics and um, really look at more gram negative uh, pathogens that could have caused their pneumonia. And then if you're unsure, start them on broad spectrum antibiotics, vancomycin or my two. If there's an abdominal pathology that you suspect, start them on zosin. Uh, just make sure you get blood cultures before you start them on antibiotics. Um, and then there's certain criteria called the SEP1 criteria that just gives you a good idea of evidence-based medicine of getting these things in a timely manner as the more hours you wait to treat and give antibiotics to septic patients, the mortality rate significantly increases. So the SEP1 criteria, which is what a lot of hospitals use in determining, recognizing, and treating sepsis, uh, recommend getting a lactic, two sets of blood cultures, and administering antibiotics all within three hours. So thanks for listening, guys. If you liked this video, don't forget to actually like it at the bottom here. And if you like all of our videos, <laughs>